Hello everyone and welcome back. Let's go ahead and create that uh, login page with 3D animation at the background. All right, and we're going to be using, by the way, spline.design in order to create that uh, 3D uh, animation effect. No need to worry, there's no uh, 3D knowledge is required for this tutorial, no JavaScript, uh, just this spline.design. And uh, all you have to do is just sign up. This one is free. All right. Once you signed up and registered, uh, just uh, go ahead and logged in. And this is the dashboard. And uh, go uh, go ahead and click this community tab. And over here, we're gonna be looking for. Let, just type the word realistic. All right. So and then press enter on the uh, uh, keyboard. And as you can see, you can actually explore uh, after this video so many assets that you can enjoy. But we're looking for this one over here. All right. So just click on that. And it will just take a few seconds to load. And while we're, while we're waiting, uh, let's head back to VS Code and create our project. So open folder, and I'm going to click on my desktop. In that folder, HTML, CSS, JS project. Uh, you can place your project where, wherever you want in your computer. So I'll just name this logged in underscore uh, 3D underscore car. All right, so you can name your project whatever you want. And once we have that folder, let's create our index.html and our style.css uh, or styles.css. Okay, so let's generate our HTML template and make sure to link our CSS file over here. And there you have it. I'll just, I'll just change the title into that. All right, so it looks like we already have the uh, asset uh, running at the background over here. If we scroll down, so if you wanna use this in your project, just go ahead and click this remix. All right, so click on that. After clicking that, it will just take a couple of seconds for the uh, project to load, the, the 3D project itself. And there you have it, our uh, 3D project. So uh, what we need to do, uh, we have to click on ex export right over here. Then you will see this, uh, additional menu uh, we wanted to click the viewer over here and we are going to click this icon here when you click this icon as you can see code copied to clipboard therefore it is now ready to be pasted in our project so let's go ahead and do that over here in our body with our project just press ctrl v on the keyboard and save if we are going to right click here and open with live server uh, we will be able to see that 3d uh, asset running here on our uh, file index.html. We'll just have to wait for just a few seconds and there you have it. And right now we, we are just going to add our HTML tags over here. So we will just create a very simple project. So div with a class of container and this one will have an h2. You can type here whatever you want. I'll just type here code mutation, the name of this channel, and then an input over here. And I'm going to add a class attribute over here. Uh, I'll just name this inputs. This one is a type of text and then has a placeholder of, we can type here, enter username. Okay, so we can copy this and paste it over here. And then we can change this type attribute to password. And we can type here, enter a password or enter your password. All right, so after that, let's have a div here. Uh, this one will hold the uh, label, okay, uh, for the checkbox, okay, this one type, uh, it's going to be the checkbox for the remember me uh, part of the login page. So the ID, I will just type here, remember me, a uh, very straightforward ID. And on uh, with the label, okay, four, uh, we're going to have to copy this ID for this four attribute, and we type the text over here. Okay, and of course, we also need the button, right? So button, and we will just type here, logged in. And if we're going to check our project, now we have this. And as you can see, the page loaded with the 3D animation. Our HTML uh, elements are over here at the bottom. So what we're going to do in our CSS file is to place this over here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's target everything first and get rid of the... Uh, uh, margin and padding, okay, padding to zero. And of course, we're gonna be utilizing box sizing border box. 
the body over here, the body and HTML, we're going to set the uh, width to 100% and then the height 100% as well. And this, we are going to center the uh, elements uh, vertically and horizontally on the page. So we're going to be using display flex for that. Uh, justify content center and align item center. All right. And after that, we're going to have, we can have a font family here. I'll just choose Arial. So refresh that. And we have, we, we can see now the HTML tags over here and the 3D uh, asset, our uh, sports uh, toy car over here. And we're, we can now go ahead and target that animation so we can make that as a background. So that is going to be this tag over here is blind viewer. And I'm going to paste that in here. And uh, first we are going to set a position of fixed. All right. And the top, uh, since we have declared the position fix, we can now uh, utilize the top attribute. Without having this, we can't use top. Okay. So zero and the left margin zero. Okay. And the width is going to be 100 view width. And the height is also going to be 100 view height to make sure that it will cover the entire screen. And after that, let's set a Z index of negative one to make sure that it will be uh, sent backwards, right? And our HTML will be at the front like so. Uh, I'll just go ahead and click refresh just to make sure that our 3D asset uh, will fill the entire screen like, like that. Okay, so now all we have to do is uh, set the border and some color uh, of this container right here. So let's copy that class and we're going to type period here and the class name container. So the display is going to be this uh, flex as well. So display flex and then flex direction column and then align item center. All right, so after align item center, uh, maybe we can set some padding around 40 pixels. Let's try to set the background color first. Uh, we're gonna set background, the RGBA value. Uh, we're going to set this to uh, black. And alpha value, we will set that to 0 0.1, almost uh, transparent. Uh, let's try first 0 0.5 so we can see a little bit a little bit better. As you can see, there's some uh, coloring already here. Okay, so after the background, uh, we're going to set the border radius. Uh, let's try 10 pixels so we have some rounded border over here. And after that, uh, we can use the backdrop. Okay, backdrop filter. Where is it? There it is. And uh, for this one, you know, uh, it, it, it's going to be a personal preference. We can start with 10 pixels and there's like a blur, like so. If you want, you can reduce this to around five pixels, less blur, maybe two pixel. And uh, maybe that one is good. So uh, let's, just, let's just set the maximum width because right now uh, the width is like this. Uh, let me just refresh this one so that I will, uh, our 3D will cover the entire page. So we're going to set the width for this, maybe a minimum width, right? Or maximum. Let's try maximum width. The maximum width, we will try 600 pixels. And the box shadow, uh, the first value is horizontal offset, second value, uh, vertical off offset. And uh, the last one is blur, okay? So this one's going to be zero, zero for black and the alpha value, the opacity is going to be uh, 0 0.9 and we have something like that. All right, so let's continue. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and drag this all the way to the left so we have more space for coding. So after box shadow, maybe we can set, uh, so this is just the maximum width, right? Uh, we're going to set the width right now to around 90%. Uh, you will you will notice that uh, the the use of this if we are going to disable that uh, you know our width is actually ninety percent so we just want this uh, border right here to be flexible so we it's ninety percent so that means uh, the maximum width even if it's a television or or a large screen uh, it will have a limit of six hundred pixels but for a smaller devices it will consume ninety percent of the width as you can see right over here.
All right, so let's go ahead and maximize that. And over here in our uh, uh, code after the width, uh, maybe we can also set the minimum height of the entire container. Okay, minimum height. Let's try uh, 500 pixels. And I think we're good for the con container. Let's go ahead and see. I think I'm good with this one. Maybe I will reduce the blur. Where is it? The blur over here, backdrop filter to one pixel. All right, I think that's good. All right, so let's continue with this one right over here. Uh, maybe we wanted all the text to be in white or we will just target this uh, uh, H2 over here. So that that uh, H2 is residing uh, uh, inside the container, right? So we can say container and then H2. And we can set the color to hex value of uh, pound, pound sign or hashtag FFF uh, for white. Now we have that. And let's have some spacing between this H2 and, and these elements over here. Uh, we can set the margin bottom, maybe around 15 pixels or maybe 20. Let's try 20 first. I think that's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and style these inputs over here. And uh, remember that we have used a class over here, inputs. So we can basically use that class. First, we can say container, okay, and then inputs. All right, so let's refresh our project just to make sure uh, that everything's okay. So we're going to set the width to around 100% for this uh, input boxes. There you go. Uh, color of the text is going to be uh, dark gray. I'm going to use the hex value hashtag 242424 and then outline none. Okay, make sure we have see my colon over here. Uh, border one pixel solid and then black. I'll just use RGBA uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, for the opacity, I'll just set that to 1. And we also need some padding because that one is quite uh, narrow. So let's have a padding. Let's try 15 pixels. I think the background is already fine. We don't need to set the background color. If you want this, the background color to be a little bit more transparent, you can set that, uh, of course, by doing this. RGBA, all right? We can pick this color over here. Uh, we can hover and set that to white. And for the opacity, it's 0 0.5, as you can see. Uh, maybe 0 0.8 would be better. Okay, there you go. All right, so after that input, we can now go ahead and target this text over here. Hold on, that's remember me. Let me just uh, correct the spelling. There you go. So that's going to be the label, right? We only have one label, so we can just go ahead and say label over here. And uh, we can set the color to white because we cannot see it right now. There you go. And we're going to set the margin and padding, but a label is by default an inline element, right? So we want to make sure that it will respect the top and bottom margin and padding without uh, using uh, or without doing display inline block. Uh, we will not be able to set the margin and padding uh, at least top uh, for the top and bottom of this element. So after the label, we can now go ahead and target this button over here. So we can just say button. We don't need to address the container because we only have one button anyway. Uh, background color, we are just, uh, I have here a color that is kind of similar to this uh, with the color of that uh, car. So it's going to be EA or Eagle Alpha 1 and then uh, Foxtrot uh, 09. If we save this, you see that color, right? So we can now go ahead and, uh, you know, the padding. Let's go ahead and style this. Padding would probably, let's try uh, 15 pixels. And border, where we are also going to set that to none. Okay, and then after the border, maybe border radius as well. Uh, we're going to, uh, let's try uh, 5 pixels. Maybe we will do that with the uh, input also here. We, let's copy that and paste that over here, border radius, there you go. We have border radius now. Oops, let me close that. All right, so let's continue styling the button. The color, let's set that to white. And we're going to uh, set the font size to around 1.2 rem. Oops, that's quite big, one rem. Okay, I think that's fine. 
cursor pointer if you want this uh, pointer over here. And of course, the width, we can now set that to 100%. It would look better like so. And the spacing over here, we can just set a uh, margin or just margin top. Maybe around 10 pixels or 20. I think 20 is good. All right, so if we want to hover this button, like uh, if you want to change the, the background color of this button when a user hover on it, to let them to let them know that they are targeting that element so we can say button and then hover all we have to do is copy this and i have here a prepared uh, lighter red orange color that is e and then five six three two one and if we hover on it as you can see we have that uh, uh orange color that is uh, i just estimated to be have similar color with this toy car all right, so let's make sure to save our work and let's preview our project in full. Uh, like so, I'm going to refresh just to make sure that everything has is taking effect. And we're going to type here, all right? I think that's a good font uh, uh, size already. Uh, but I think we're cool. All right, so there you have it, guys. Congratulations. We were able to create this uh, login page with awesome, uh, beautiful uh, background 3D animation uh, effect all right so if you're not satisfied with the design you can improve this further by just tweaking some settings over here in our css file and i hope that this has been informative for you see you in the next one